This is the Dr. Laura Program. I'm Dr. Laura Schlesinger. A dominant voice in domestic violence research and advocacy stands accused of falsifying data, and it's not the first time, I'm sure, in order to portray men as perpetrators and women as victims of domestic violence, despite numerous studies demonstrating that women are as physically aggressive or more aggressive than men in their relationships with spouses or partners. And from my understanding, the stats are the same for uh, two women and two men. Jacqueline C. Campbell, professor at Johns Hopkins University, which is no small potatoes, fabricated key statements about domestic violence and then represented the statements as findings of a government study. And to discuss this and the havoc that has wrought, we have another dominant voice, (laughs) Wendy McElroy. Welcome to the program. And thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. I'm a big fan of yours. Well, I am back at you. I feel like I've been living through a political cautionary tale. (laughs) Yes. Now, I have had uh, a number of times Christina Hoff Summers. Uh, You two have a lot in common in blowing the lid off falsifications. And she has described many attacks on her based upon her just simply wanting the truth out there. What have you had to survive in that regard? Oh, everything from I'm financed by the pornography industry to I mean, seriously, that was a serious one to uh, tax. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it, I'm very careful with my scholarship, so they can't do much on accuracy, but they can go after things like that. So um, now, from my understanding, Attorney General Eric Holder, who has never met a false finding he didn't want to repeat, has also repeated false statements similar to those of Dr. Campbell. And they, uh, what's come of that? Well, based on our, on her findings, what he said is in, in 2009, he gave speeches that made a really shocking statement. He said that the leading cause of death for American African women, black women, ages 15 to 45, was intimate partner of homicide, which is domestic violence, which means the leading cause of the death in black women is black men. And that's a pretty shocking statement about, first of all, black men. Black family, and so what is the truth? It, it it's based on nothing. But the the leading cause of death for black women in that age range is if you go to the Centers for Disease uh, uh, Control, if you go to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, which is a Department of Justice uh, depart, uh, agency, by the way, you'll find that it's cancer, yeah, it's heart disease, right? And if you basically go down, homicide is fifth. And that's all homicides. If you take out domestic violence, it goes down to 7th or 8th. And it's not a close 7th or 8th. It's something like 16,000 cancer and then 300 homicide. Why do people... Okay, motivation. Why would she want to risk her career? I mean, this is career suicide. She's done. What would be the motivation? In general, I see this in the feminist writings. There's a lot of exaggerations and fabrications to make a point. What's the motivation? Well, you, first of all, there's a lot of federal funding involved, and if you want follow to drive, the money, if you want to drive for federal funding, you need hyperbole. You can't just say, "Wouldn't it be nice?" Or this balanced study says men and women are victimized equally, so let's pass the Violence Against Women Act. You know, you can't do that. You have, to, if you're going to push those acts through Congress. You need the funding, and you need to have the the hyperbole. Also, especially now in in periods where there's a real you know tug of war, political bipartisanship, the Democrats are pro woman. That's the constituency. That's their base. They want the the GOP. They want libertarians. They want conservatives to be the anti women. So you know it's 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 an old story. Money and power. This is like a bad dream. Are there any consequences ever? Because I know that uh, Christina had logged and proven all kinds of misrepresentations, and I I was never able to follow up with anything. Anybody get their knuckles wrapped? 
We're trying. Uh, the, the organization I'm representing is Stop Abusive and Violent Environments, which is at saveservices.org. And it, its mission is to do things like this, to, to make sure that the laws, the public policies, the programs that these stats are based on, at least they're based on accuracies and not on falsehoods because they affect real people. I mean, that's a vicious slander against black men. That's a terrible thing to say. If you were a black mother going and, and your 17-year-old daughter was going out on a date, have fun. But remember, the person sitting beside you is the leading cause of your death. That's a terrible <laughs> <Yes>. thing to say. <laughs> Somehow when you said that. It, <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's a terrible slander on black men. So we're trying to do that. The consequences, these people are basically funded uh, by federal grants, uh, save, stop abusive and violent environments. We 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 haven't seen federal money, you know, since our birth. <laughs> so mm-hmm. and and we wouldn't take it if if, if it were offered. Um, so these people are funded by the the people who want advocacy research. They don't want the accuracy. They want the advocacy research. They have tenured positions. Uh, they are. Did she get fired? Oh no. Of course not. Is she going to get promoted? What? I I think she's embarrassed. Uh, we That's have, it. Uh, she's basically the the the, the just, uh, Department of Justice who had this statement about the leading cause of death in black women on their site for like four years, and we were trying to get it scrubbed forever. Has finally done something. What they've done is they've not taken off the inaccuracies, which are repeated. What they've done is if you take the time to scroll down to the bottom, you'll find a non-disclaimer disclaimer that says, we pulled this from reputable sources and, and uh, we verified it, but it may not be as accurate as we thought. That's oh pretty much God. what they say. This is but, all to maintain democratic power, the Democratic power, Party. Power, wow. funding, and political correctness. Now, you, you can't say it's all... Well, there's simple. nothing politically correct about saying black men beat their women. That's pretty anti-politically correct these days. If it's in the cause of domestic violence uh, funding, yes, it is. I mean, oh, wow. because dom- domestic violence... That even beats out race, huh? Pretty much. I, this is my experience. I, I, I could be skewed, but it, it's, it's, a, it's almost... A, a, a religious position that women are the victims and men are the perpetrators. So what's the truth? The truth is, well, if you go to most studies, uh, I, could, I could cite a, a 2010 Centers for Disease Control study uh, that said that domestic violence, 6.7% of men said that they experienced it, 6.5% of women. And that's pretty consistent in mm-hmm. most studies. They also find that when it is perpetrated by the men, it's more damaging because men are stronger, bigger in general than women. So, you know, there's that countervailing thing. But in general, I don't know why a law like the Violence Against Women Act needs to have the word women in it, why it shouldn't be violence against victims. Yes. Yeah, I uh, wrote an article on time about how difficult it is if a man is being beaten by his wife. He has no place to go. And the one place I found that he could go was a gay domestic violence place because it served men. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was sending the guys. Well, good for you. The straight guys, because that's the only place. Uh, And that's in California, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the last time I looked into this, and I do admit it was like seven months ago, there was in America um, one place for men. And there were hundreds of places for women. Well, as I said, if you go into the gay community outreach, that's where you'll find the help for men, gay or straight. They help the men. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are some of the public policies that uh, Dr. Campbell's falsified findings have uh, created? Well, this was used in the Violence Against Women Act, uh, the stat, to basically stir up the, the kind of, as I said, hyperbole that is required by federal funding on a massive level. Uh, it also basically is being used uh, to to uh, buttress up the idea of uh, domestic violence and, and rape on campuses, and there's going to be a whole campaign on that. Uh, that's I hate to here. sound tacky, but women on campuses are lining up to have hookups. You're not sounding tacky. What sounds tacky to me are the are, are the standards that are being used. To Why does he have to do up. anything forced? They're lining up to do it. 
they are asking questions. The, the, the surveys and uh, that that the, the one in five women are being raped or one on eight on campuses that you hear. If you read the surveys that they're they're sending out to to base this data on, it's have you ever, when you've been drunk or on drugs, had sex and not explicitly consented? Well, when you're drunk, or you're, you're, you're feeling more likely to give into it without feeling like a bad girl. Come on, we all and know that. And there's no verification. It's That's not rape, which is called a slop. Uh, and I never understood if she's drunk, it's a bad thing. If he's drunk, it, he still has responsibility. Well, that's the next campaign we'll see, and I'm sure some stats from from Miss Campbell. I, I, you know, the, does she have I, a doctorate I, from somewhere? Oh yeah, she has a she, she has a PhD, and she's at the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. Uh, I hate to be altogether cynical because one of the things that's really frightening is that I think she may believe this and be ideologically blind. A lot of researchers uh, look at data and see what they want to see, especially when they're being uh, driven by a belief that the truth is there if only they look hard enough and, and sort through it uh, enough. So well, if you belong idealistic. to an organization or uh, an advocacy group like like feminism, and I know you do I feminist and all that, but I, I consider myself a recovered feminist. Um, and I have said that a zillion times, and I'm so proud well, we of it. We have got to go out and have dinner and drink. We do. Time. You come to you come to the West Coast, I will treat you. But uh, you know, one of the things that just you know always astonished me is that you have to be freaking angry all the time. That's one of the things I remember. You had to be angry at men, angry at everything. I was in a store. Uh, I said something. A guy said something, and I got angry because it was, you know, sexist. Just angry all the time, and that's your milieu. So you have got to only, if you're going to maintain a base, be it a racial group, uh, an ethnic group, a feminist gender group, they have to be angry. But you have to keep feeding that or you're not going to have a constituency. You're not going to have constituency and you're not going to have funding if you don't have right. victims. So you have to create them if they aren't right. there. Exactly. How can, how can my audience get involved in making sure the truth gets on that government site? Because this is wild. The best thing they can do is get involved with Stop Abusive and Violent Environments, which is Save Services, as, it's, as it sounds, dot org. Save right Services dot org. Yes, they're very responsive, and these are people who are volunteering their time for no other reason than, well, most of them have had men who, who are in their lives who have been victimized in some way by domestic violence and have been turned away by the policemen who laughed at them or who have uh, had false accusations against them. So they are very motivated in terms of, of personal and emotional, but they're doing it on a volunteer basis. Yeah, you brought up the, the schools. I know I went to graduate school at Columbia University, and uh, way after I left, guys were getting thrown out of school because some girl said, he raped me. There was no legalities involved. He just got thrown out. Oh yeah, it's what's much, that? It's much worse now because they've basically taken away a lot of, a lot of uh, what are considered to be due process and pro procedural rights. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, rights of uh, anyone who's accused. You cannot face your accuser. You cannot even know the name of your accuser. If she wishes, wishes to remain anonymous, then that's her right because she deserves to be protected. <laughs> now that's a. I, I know that due process gives bitches rights, a lot of power. That's a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the fact is that even though it's not a criminal procedure, this can harm a person's life as much as a criminal conviction. Oh, you want to come to our new university? That's fine. Now, why did you leave Columbia University? Oh, you were thrown out because you raped a girl? Okay. Yeah, and that that eliminates his future. So you're, you're six months from graduation and you will never get that license to be a lawyer? Fine. Uh, and, and it will follow you on your record in the military, in anything else that you go on to or into. Uh, this is something that devastates people's lives. And it's being the, the thing that bothers me the most is that these devastating, inhumane tactics are being used in the name of compassion and caring for victims. <laughs> and it, uh, Clever, it's don't you think? It's. I think they believe it. I think Diabolical. a lot of them actually believe it. And that may you be give worse. people way too much credit. I believe um, they know exactly what they're doing, and they like the power. 
I think it's even more frightening if they actually believe what they're doing. Because yes. uh, I would much rather bargain with a cynic who who can be bought. You can't <laughs> bargain with <laughs> evil. I know, but you can't. And uh, in my opinion, after forty years of dealing in this milieu, at uh, it's definitely intentional. Wendy, you are my heroine hero. Wendy McElroy. Back at uh, you. <laughs> and uh, thank you. And uh, just give everybody a quick rundown where they can read your essays. My blog is wendymcelroy.com. And again, I, I want to push saveservices.org because those people are doing are standing pretty much alone doing great work. And I thank you so much for coming aboard and for tolerating the slings and arrows of outrageous <laughs> misfortunes. <laughs> and uh, we will talk to you again, I'm sure. I hope so. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you very much. Bye-bye. See, uh, I personally never understood smart, strong, competent, brave women being competitive with each other. I have never been competitive with that kind of a woman. Never. I look at them as an ally, as a sister. Um, There aren't many people, much less females around, who have, excuse me, the balls to stand up because the consequences are dire. I've had just about every advocacy group there is go after me unfairly, never reasonably, never earned it, but they were smart enough to use my name to twist what I said so they could get money and power. Glad, for example, just really got off on doing a whole fundraiser on Dr. Laura's Full of Hate simply because of the marriage issue. You don't have to be hateful to have that opinion. But if you use the word hate, you get a lot of people donating. (laughs) That's what I discovered. (laughs) That was my first foray into the evil world of advocacy advocacy groups. Wendy McElroy, terrific woman. And women, black 